which is really just junk. Wouldn't it be nice to enjoy family meals that create a lasting relationship with nutritious food? It's not as hard as we think. We just need a little bit of fresh perspective and ingenuity. I know that that's pretty easy for me to say because I'm a chef. That's where the cook comes in. My name is Marcy Reagan, and I run a personal chef and catering service called Relish for Chef. I'm also a mom. I spend a lot of time talking to my kids, my family, my clients, strangers who pass by who just want to ask a chef a question. I talk to everybody about food. When I tell people I'm a chef, it's kind of like truth serum. People launch into their deepest, darkest, food-related professions. I may have failed as a psychology undergraduate, but I'm still like a really good listener, and I've had many conversations with parents in tears because their kids hardly eat anything. It's terrifying. Does any of that sound familiar? Do you really want the change? If so, you have to change the perspective and put some time in with a fresh approach. You gotta shake up those, no those uh, natural habits that you already have. Don't buy the crappy processed snacks. Flush the cheese it down the toilet. <laughs> Remember when your kids were babies and you steamed and pureed organic carrots from the farmer's market? Your first bites of real food. You made the effort, but now there's like soccer practice, and deadlines, and the night shift, and ugh. Jane, she won't eat anything green. Toddler Adam, just like has a tantrum about anything that's mushy. My own son once declared a moratorium on orange fruit. No sweet potatoes, carrots, and oranges. We had like a lengthy philosophical debate on like what color mangoes actually are, but then he decided he still kind of likes sweet potato fries. <laughs> my younger sister, my own flesh and blood, grew up in the same house. She as a kid subsisted on carrot sticks, dipped in ketchup, and maybe some chicken. She didn't eat a banana until she was in her 20s. Maybe this sounds familiar. How do we break down these barriers? Let's do my ABCs. I have a whole alphabet of strategies. All right. So, A. Adapt to include everyone at your table. Everyone has different food issues these days. Whether it's an allergy, an aversion, a bad diet. We have to learn to adapt in the kitchen to make everyone feel welcome in the dining room. One meal can have lots of options. You can have a ground turkey taco, or if someone's a vegetarian, try jackfruit. You can have all corn tortillas. You can have lettuce, fake cheese, real cheese, whatever it may be. Provide options for your kids and anyone at your table. eating 
habits, even if you don't like broccoli either. Kids learn by copying you. If you say, I hate the texture of eggs in my mouth, they think it's okay to arbitrarily rule out certain foods. Ditto if they hear like a sibling say, like, oh, Johnny doesn't eat this, Sarah doesn't eat that. Don't legitimize their pickiness. Eat. Encourage experiments. Next word. Oh, great, there we go. See? Dragon fruit. Food is an amazing subject. Science is delicious. It's magical. In grade school, I had a family friend who would, uh, we would do these, like, cook-offs every year. We would get recipes. We'd go to the store. We'd touch the ingredients, figure it all out. And we make food together, and that was a really great experience. And it was really tasty at the end, too. <clears throat> with my own children, I explore foods that I've never had either. Like dragon fruit, star fruit, perfect cauliflower. There's so many different options to just kind of mix it up a little bit.
this is just turkey that's cooking. Just no one's eating it, but there you go. Okay. Get to L. We learn, we listen, and then we love our food. L is very simple. Love the food. M. Make memories. During the holidays, when my son was three, he declared he wanted to make some gingerbread. I got all the oil, uh, royal icing ready. We started to ice and decorate the cookies. It was a disaster. I turned my back for like one second, and then he was entering the bag right into his mouth. Um, but he had fun with it, and he loves that memory, and he's pretty pranked on sugar for the rest of the day, but you know, whatever, it's holiday time. You might fail, you might succeed, but you will be doing it together, building experience and positive food memories. Different types of food for N, nourish, to stimulate the palate. Salty, bitter, sweet, umami, sour. Expose your palate to them all. Let your tongue get used to it. Kids' tongues get used to it. Just repeated exposure over time. O, ownership. When my son Graham helps make the guacamole. He takes ownership of that task. He's very interested on how it turns out and then you build positivity around the whole meal. And then there's P, which leads us to try. Try new foods and uh, reinforce with positivity. If somebody tries a bean for the first time, say, what's up, dude, high five. Like, let's go for it, be positive. Draw them in with a positive experience. Little by little, realistic goals. Q, quality versus quantity. This is something I could talk about all day, but it's only one letter. We have a lot, we're lucky in America. We have access to a lot of great food, but sometimes it's cheap and not very nutrient dense. Think about the quality of the food that you are eating. You can afford $2.99 for you know, a protein. Try something that's pasture-raised instead. Try a, like, try a pork shoulder or a chicken thigh. Try something different, because when you try something different, you get exposed more nutrients and minerals and then you can buy a higher quality protein. Respect our bodies and respect the animals that we eat with R. Okay, all right, so no video. Um, where were we? Respect, all right. So cuts of meat like that, that are um, pork shoulder, such like that, they um, let you buy better quality meat that is less expensive. Now, sometimes we have to learn to respect the whole animal. It's not just chicken breasts like walking around in a field that are boneless and skinless, like they're the whole animal. Learn to respect the whole animal, and sometimes there's a little bit of fat or something on it. Just like roll with it with your kid. Just have repeated exposure. Share stories with your children about food. I have a lot of food stories. I'm sure you can tell. Everybody in my family eats pretty well. We all love, we all love it. But you can share stories about the cookie making or the time that the dad took you to the hibachi restaurant for the first time. I mean, those are memories that are exciting and have positivity with food.
questions for Xenofo. I really think that you should try new foods whenever you can around the globe. Go to the different market. Go to a different restaurant. Go to an Ethiopian restaurant. Get your hands in the food. Try something different. Maybe you'll see something that you know can shake you out of your routine. And then um, why is for young? We all want to get there. We all want to be happy and eat yummy food. And then all of those letters together are for Z where you would choose some food zen. So start eating well now. Make the habits now. Learn the basic skills now. And if you don't have the basic skills, I run a personal chef service and I can totally help you with that. <laughs> If you put the investment in now, it will give your family a more balanced palate and outlook for a healthy future. Thank you very much. If you have any questions, I'm here.